Hey Happy Scrappers, I just want to thank all of you all who have taken the time to watch um, the video that I made for the Victorian Garden Cottage mini album and I must say that I was overwhelmed <laughs> by all the response that I have got and thank you so much to all of you all who have uh, you know been kind enough to leave encouraging comments and I always feel that um, you know sometimes good comments always turns to sometimes surprising and wonderful friendships so I just really appreciate all of you all up there just taking the time uh, just to stop by um, my channel and my videos I have received a lot of uh, requests for um, tips or tutorials or techniques on what I did for my Victorian mini album and this video would try to take you through some of the steps that I have or some of the techniques that I have used uh, in this mini album. Probably not all of it and you know because I probably keep some for the later projects and maybe the later upcoming videos. So first, as you know, I have mentioned that this particular mini album is made out from envelopes and from paper bags. So the idea was that to have long envelopes so it can fit very nicely uh, landscape pictures and then you have paper bags who can keep um, who can fit really nicely portrait pictures. So that was my idea. And what I did was um uh, again, so here is a template two envelopes and this envelope is basically six inches by nine inches and what I do is I score it about one and a quarter inch. So I score it and I fold it. So here what you get is one and a quarter and here is about seven and three quarters so that makes about nine inches. And then for each flap, I take a paper bag and you know where the cover is, the flap, I fold it. I fold it again and then where the pocket is, I turn it behind and I'll stick it this way. So every time you come to a page where the paper bag is stuck, you always open it and here it will reveal your pocket. Now I do the same thing here with this, the next envelope as well. Wherever there's a flap that I've scored one and a quarter inch, I will take my pocket and I will stick it this way. So where the flap is, it's always sticking on the side that has no pocket or no flaps. Now how do I put it all together is that instead of um, doing it this way where all the mini albums is on one side like this, I was concerned because I knew I was going to over embellish the album. I thought that I had to even out my embellishments and I would do it on the opposite side instead. So this one will be up, up tight here. So I have my mini album, let's say the first page, I want the flap to flap upwards on outside, on the outside for the first page. So I put this as the first page and then when I flip it, I have my mini album here on the inside. So in this case, from the top bird's eye view, if there's a lot of, because the mini albums can fit in a lot of stuff, right? So if I have it all on the same side, the inside's gonna get too chunky or the outside's gonna get too chunky. So if I have it alternate outside and the inside and the next one on the outside, um, hopefully it'll be quite even out, the chunkiness of it, the chunkiness of it. Now, how do I put it together? was how I bind it was um, I think I got this idea from well a lot of scrappers use it actually I think Kathy, Kathy from Kathy Paper Phenomena and Joyce as well um, so what they do is that they take a cardstock and so this one is about three inches in length okay and then I score it down okay here I have to I have the measurements here here's like about one and three eighths and I score and then after a quarter an inch later I score again and this whole thing is about three inches so when you score you have a spine and what I do is that I just stick the spine in the middle like this okay 
Um, for the detailed tutorial on how to do this spine, I will try to find uh, one of the videos that maybe Kathy or Joyce have done this and I'll put the link below so you can see it better. <laughs> so that's basically how I bound the book. And of course, all my spines, I painted it with an acrylic paint. I use this color, Worn Penny. It's a very nice copper color, which um, sort of fit the color theme or complemented the color theme that I had for my mini album. And I, I painted it all over, even on the inside. So that on the inside and on the outside of the spine, you can see this one color. How I bound the covers also, I put a chipboard. The last layer here would be a chipboard. And the same thing here for the front cover. I'll put the, bind, uh, the binding here. And then on top here, I'll place the chipboard as well for the, for the front and back cover. For the next part, the tutorial, I will talk about the pockets that I did for the paper bag. As you know, I used this Tim Holtz alteration, the postage and plug die. And I basically used this edger. So normally, you always do the edger like just um, simple. We just line it up and we cut it just like this. But what I did was I did it on a diagonal position. So I lined up my die. And it's probably a bit difficult to see. But this edge, I lined it up diagonal wise. And then I run it through my big shot. So what I do is that I cut a pattern paper, something like this, which I want it for my pocket. The pattern paper is facing up here and I probably stick something here just to have it in place. And when I put my alteration edger on this side, so you know, you probably need to check and it will turn out like this this way and then I can stick it down what helps me as well is that I have already done let's say a sample and let's say I want my pocket only to be about this high I would actually outline with a pencil here the shape I'm doing this really fast so obviously my outline is not that great but it's oops I just outline a shape and then I can see where my line is over here and obviously the camera can't really pick it up but once you're doing it you will realize you can see the line and especially I always lined it up to where this um, peak is and I see the peak over here and I lined it up like that and I know okay that's where I want it to be and I go through the big shot and you will come up with a pattern paper like this and a really nice diagonal pocket if you notice one of my page I did a flower pot and what I and what I use for the flower part is basically a coffee sleeve <laughs> that I got from a cafe, which is was just um, which is near my office. And then I did multiple stamping on the tags, and I show this technique in this um, tips and techniques series um, how I did this. And, and I just slipped all the tags and arranged, and I put a flower here, of course, and I just arranged all the flowers in this coffee pot. And I had some lace that was like coming out uh, from this coffee sleeve. After I wrapped this coffee sleeve with my pattern paper, then what I did was I Versamark this stem. And because you see all this um, nitty gritty, it looks like, um, well to me it looks a bit like dirt. <laughs> so what I do is that I Versamark this and then I stem this. I, I'm careful that I don't get the edge um, stamp up. So I just Versamark from here to here. So I don't have the lining of the edge. And I stamp that at the bottom. And um, I stamped it, sorry, not with Versamark, I've stamped it with a vintage photo. So I stamp it over here, and then I stamp, and then I pour vintage photo distress powder all over it. And of course, this is not long enough, so I stamp it one more time uh, again here. Okay, or I think I did it more like here, which means I just need to ink this part over here and then I stamp it down here so I have a full edge so if you um, if you see the flower part you see all this brown nitty like dirty dirt on it so that was the actual look I was going for the dirt on the flower part so that's how I did the flower part um, one of the page you recognize this flower and I I did a card 
uh, which I will load it up as well, which is the friendship card series, uh, sunflower card. So check that tutorial and I'll show you how I did this puffy daisy for the page. Okay, see you in my next episode. Bye.